Our movie today begins with a young American waitress, Frances McCullen. And Frances is living a quiet life in New York City, and we see Frances riding the subway home from work, and she discovers a designer handbag. And the ID inside the bag verifies that it belonged to a woman named Greta. And Frances tries to return the bag to the lost and found, but there was no one there, so she took it home with her. I never really could imagine a woman returning a designer handbag, but hey, this is a movie. And Frances shares a stunning loft with her rich friend Erica. And Erica goes through the handbag and she finds a stack of money inside. And Erica suggests that they go have fun with it, but Frances tells her that she's actually returning it to the owner and they can't take anything out of the bag. And later, both Frances and Erica go to the movies, and this makes Frances sad because she used to go to the movies with her mom. And her mom died of cancer not so long ago. And Erica reminds her to contact her father, but their relationship is strained, and Chris, her dad, has moved on from his wife's death, and he's a bit of a workaholic. And the next morning, Frances travels to Greta's address to return the bag. And Greta was very thankful, and she invites her in to have some coffee, which she was already brewing. And Greta is a lonely French woman, and her husband Christophe passed away a long time ago, and her daughter, Nicola, is set to live in Paris. And as she was hearing all this, Frances notices this strange knocking sound coming from the other side of the piano. And Greta blames the neighbor's construction for the noise, and Greta plays the piano for Frances, and she explains that her late husband taught her. And she also tells her stories about her family, and Frances notices a picture of a dog on top of the piano. And Greta implies that the dog also passed away, and Frances took pity on her and she offered to help her find another dog for support. And Greta declines the offer but thanks Frances before she leaves. And Frances gives her her phone number in case she changed her mind about the dog. And indeed, Greta calls Frances later that evening and she accepts the dog offer. And the two of them go to the pound the following weekend to pick up this old dog. And Greta is next seen going through and stalking Frances' social media. And Frances starts to spend time with Greta to keep her company. And they visit a church where her husband played the piano. And they talk and they, you know, interact and stuff. And we see Frances reminding Greta that she doesn't have to be alone all the time. And that she'll be there with her sticking to her like chewing gum. And this made Greta really happy. And the two of them seem to be friends at this point. And Erica invites Frances to go to a party with her, but Frances declines because she already had dinner plans with Greta. And Erica becomes really suspicious of Greta, believing that Frances is using her as a maternal substitute and that their friendship is a little unnatural. And Frances is offended by this remark and she just leaves the house to have dinner with Greta. And Frances and Greta prepare their dinner together while chatting warmly. And Frances, while searching for candles to light for their dinner, finds multiple identical handbags with the exact contents inside each and every one of them. And one has a sticky note with a phone number of a woman called Samantha, and the other one has Frances' name and phone number. And disturbed by this, Frances becomes very uncomfortable during the dinner, and she excuses herself from the table. And she returns home and she tells Erica everything she saw, and she decides to cut ties with Greta. Apparently this lady is luring women for god knows what purposes? And Greta attempts to contact her and get in touch with Frances. And she even pays her a visit at work to talk to her, but when her boss refuses to get rid of Greta, Frances is forced to confront her about her finding in the apartment. And she confronts her about it, and she refuses to participate in whatever crazy game Greta has planned, and Frances tells Greta to leave her alone, and she tells her that she'll never see her again. And Greta doesn't stop there. She sent a flower with a note saying, I'm so sorry, sweetheart. And Greta continues to stalk and harass Frances, and she even stands outside the restaurant to just stare at her. And when Frances calls the police, they advise her to ignore her, and they can't really do anything about it because she's on public property, and she didn't make any threats, and she hasn't shown any signs that she will attack her or anything. And then, Greta shows up at Frances and Erica's apartment, and she scares Frances. And she explains how lonely she is, and that everybody needs a friend. And she reminds Frances of her promise to her about how she said that she'd stick to her like gum. And Frances tells her that she can't keep doing this, she tells her to leave her house, but this only made Greta furious and she threatens her and she spits the chewing gum on her hair. And then she leaves, which was insane. And later, Frances and her friend Erica went to the police station to pursue a restraining order against Greta. But they tell them that it's gonna take months to actually get a hearing. And fearing for the dog that Greta adopted, his name is Morton, by the way, Frances tries to figure out a way to get him away from Greta. 
and she goes inside Greta's house and she digs through her trash to find any information that she could find on her and inside she found an envelope addressed to Nicola but it was not delivered to her in Paris, it was just returned to the sender. And Frances then heads home and she was on her phone with her father and she receives a picture from Greta. And Greta sends Frances photos of Erica in her exact location implying that she's actually stalking her. And Frances talks to Erica on the phone until she's in a secure location and Greta keeps sending Frances pictures to show her how close to Erica she actually is. And she even follows her onto a bus and Erica spots Greta on the bus and she tells her that she's crazy and to get off the bus and Erica's really surprised that Greta actually followed her on the bus because this is just crazy. And Erica manages to find the cab that Frances was, was in and she joins her. And Frances then makes the attempt to contact Nicola but after a few days, Francis receives a call from an officer named Alexa Hammond. And Alexa was a former lover of Nicola. And she tells Francis that Nicola actually offed herself four years ago and she's never visited France. Alexa also confirms that Greta is a very sick woman. And after Francis tells her what happened, she adds that Greta is not actually French, she's actually Hungarian. And after finding all of this out, Francis encounters Greta at her own restaurant. And apparently Greta made a reservation and Francis must now tend to her. And Greta then claims that she just wants to talk, but instead of just talking, she harasses Francis by making a scene. And she breaks a glass of alcohol before bringing up Francis's mother and saying that she had to pass away for them to be together and for them to meet. And Greta then flips her table over and she begins walking towards Francis who runs to the kitchen. And Greta is then restrained by the staff and some of the customers as the police arrive and arrest her. But the following day she gets released. And Francis is torn to either go away with her father or go with Erica out of the country because at this point it's just crazy. And Frances doesn't just want to leave the country because of Greta and she gets really torn between leaving and staying. And Erica then suggests lying to Greta as a way of slowly fading her out of her life and telling her that she's actually leaving the country to deal with her own problems and it's not about Greta at all. And as she does this, she's gonna secretly hide in her apartment. And Frances likes this plan and she goes to meet up with Greta. And they meet at a church and Frances apologized for what happened and she tells her that she actually cares about her. And she tells her that she's just been upset about her mother and she's leaving the country because of that just to clear her head. And Greta implies that they're more than just friends and she gives her this really unsettling hug. And on the next scene, we see Greta drugging her dog's milk. And later, Frances is drinking at home when she begins to feel lightheaded. And Greta shows up having drugged the drink and she chastises Frances for allegedly lying about leaving. And after Frances passed out, she got some help from a guy to help her get her inside the cab and she tells him that she's actually her niece and she needed to take her to the hospital. And Greta takes Frances to her house where she's placed in this toy chest and a secret room behind the piano. And then when Frances awakens, it appears as though she was dreaming and she found Erica in her apartment and she told her that her dad arrived and then the two exchange goodbyes and Frances leaves to go to the elevator. And inside the elevator, the elevator just kept going down, like below the lobby basically. And then the walls begin to close in on her and the lights shut off. And apparently, Frances is imprisoned inside that toy chest and that was just a dream. Basically, she did get kidnapped by Greta and she is inside a toy chest. But what she just saw right now about Erica and her apartment in the elevator, that was the dream. Yeah, and as she was screaming for help inside the toy chest, Greta goes to let her out. And Greta makes it look like as though she was punishing her for lying. And she takes Francis's phone and convinces Erica that Francis is actually on a vacation with her father. While she also convinces her father that she's on a vacation with Erica, using Francis's phone and sending a bunch of pictures to convince both of them. And Francis's father, Chris, goes to their apartment and Erica and him both mention that she's on vacation. And both of them quickly are alerted that something is wrong here because each of them thought that she was on a vacation with the other one. And Chris talks to Detective Brian for assistance to find his daughter and Brian pulls up files on Greta and he explains that Greta was a nurse who was fired for abusing sleeping pills. And Brian adds that it was believed that she returned to Hungary but apparently not. And one afternoon Greta is forcing Francis to help her make cookie fiddles with a cookie cutter and Francis slams the rolling pin down and she cuts off Greta's finger with a cookie cutter and she knocks her out using the roll pin she was holding. And she tries to flee but all of the doors and 
windows are apparently locked, and she heads down to the basement but only to find one of Greta's victims in a bag. And it was apparently that lady Samantha, and she was gasping for air and convulsing briefly before she finally died. And Greta appears and chokes Frances until she collapses, and then she ties Frances to a bed and keeps her trapped behind the piano in the wall space. And Brian visits Greta's house and he sits down to talk, and Frances hears Brian mention her name, and she attempts to get his attention by banging on the bed and making the piano's pendulum begin to tick. And Brian eventually figures out that there is a secret room behind the piano, and despite Greta's attempts to block the off noise, Brian walks over to the piano, but Greta runs in barefoot so he doesn't hear her, and she injects him with a sedative before he can get to Frances. And he tries to shoot Greta and almost hits her, but he falls and passes out and then Greta takes his gun and she shoots him numerous times and then she dumps his body in a bag and she throws him in the basement. And then she cleans the blood off with bleach and she fixes the bullet holes on the wall. And now that Greta has had her victim, who is Frances, she returns to the subway in search for her next victim. And she plants her handbag at the seat and she leaves. And a woman with curly hair finds the bag and arrives at Greta's house and she allowed her inside. And they chat and drink coffee and Frances was still alive and she unsuccessfully tries to get their attention by making sounds from behind the piano. But Greta tells the new lady that the neighbors are just remodeling and that's where the sound is coming from. And Greta drinks her coffee and she finds out that it's spiked and then she passes out as a result. And the woman takes off her wig and it's apparently Erica and she's been searching the subway for the handbag until she came across Greta leaving it there. Can you imagine how difficult it is to find one lady who leaves a bag on the train? Uh, this is either dumb luck or it's because it's a movie and the plot would not conclude unless, you know, unless it's resolved. Anyways. As Greta passes out, Frances bangs on the piano and she sets off the pendulum in an effort to get Erica's attention. And Erica pulls the piano back and she releases Frances and they hug each other but they hear music playing in the living room. And Erica and Frances step out and it's apparently Greta and she grabs Frances by the throat and she tells her that she adored her more than the others. And then she collapses. Greta, not Frances. And then Erica prepares to bludgeon her to death, but Frances had a better idea and she intervenes. And apparently, the idea Frances had was to put the lady inside the toy box that she put a lot of her victims in, and then to lock it with an Eiffel Tower trinket, since she loves Paris so much. And as the movie ends, Greta wakes up inside the box, and she slowly starts bumping against the lid of the chest, and the trinket that was locking the box slowly starts to move out. And that is how this incredibly creepy movie comes to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed this recap. Make sure to leave a like, make sure to comment and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.